So this is uh, Roger Deakins, and I was cinematographer on this film, 1917, and I'm going to try and talk you through it. So this, this was interesting. This, the opening shot changed a number of times how we did it and what the shot was, but we ended on this very simple idea of just doing this continuous pull back so that you come off this bucolic landscape and you gradually reveal the world that our two characters are going to be immersed in. The uh, opening is such a... It's a surprisingly difficult move, doing that opening. We tried it a few times on different rigs. And because we wanted this very solid frame at the beginning, we realized we had to do it on a small jib arm. So the camera at the moment is on a stabilized head called a stabili, a little remotely operated stabilized head. And it's pulling back on a little jib arm. And at this point right now, it's been taken off the jib arm and now it's being carried by two grips. The camera's underslung from a pole on this little stabilized head. Now, you might wonder where the crane is. Well, that was <laughs> taken out with a wonderful digital technology. So it's actually behind Blake who was covering that tree. So what we did, we did with every take. Once we got a take we were happy with, we took the actors out and the extras out and we did a complete take that was just the backgrounds. So that with, if there was ever something that Sam needed to change in the alter in the backgrounds, they had a clean plate without the elements of the characters kind of getting in the way. The interesting thing here is when we looked at the location, we realized that plane could disappear behind the brow of the hill and it would be more dramatic for it to come up and then come straight towards us. It allowed Schofield to walk towards it and then come back to here. The plane was CG till here, now everything's live. The crash is a CG composite of an element we shot. So there was a real plane that crashed the last 30 feet or something. Um, we shot that element to uh, blend with the uh, live action of the actors falling down in the foreground. But all this here is, um, is live. That the, 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 from the blend when they get up, all this is one shot. Again, this is on the Trinity rig, Charlie Resic shooting. Now, and here, we wanted to leave Blake. We wanted the audience to forget, just as Schofield is forgetting, what's happening to Blake in the background behind him. And it was obvious blend here. We wanted to feel the landscape, and now suddenly, my God, he sees what the audience sees, which is the German pulling the knife out of Blake's stomach. This, say, is an old Govan dockyard at Dry Docks in Glasgow. And most of it, well, it is real. All the foreground here is real, but if you look from where the second truck is, from the second truck on, it's all CG. The two trucks in the front are CG, and the, the, the landscape beyond is CG because there was an end of a dry dock, so there'd be big doors there, and in the background you could see the whole of Glasgow, which was not quite period. So here we come off the Trinity rig on this pan. We now move on to a stable eye, which is on a four-point wire system. Again, we didn't do that for a blend. I like the idea of the shot, that, that you pan with Schofield's point of view, and then he walks into shot again. And that, I've done that so many times for the Coen brothers, and it seemed like a really good thing to do here. So you get that, that static look at where he's about to go. So now we're on the wire. The cranes in the far background there were, were in shot, and they had to be painted out. But otherwise, this is all in camera. The bridge and everything's in camera. Again, the wire. The camera movement is computer controlled, but the speed of it can be changed. We 
we rehearsed this shot actually at Shepparton on the back lot. We built the whole thing uh, with um, scaffold towers to match exactly what this what this space was going to be. So we actually rehearsed the wire shot with George on the back back lot at Shepparton. So that when we got to Glasgow, it was actually everybody knew where the camera needed to go, what we needed to do. Again, the background here, the trees weren't there and the backgrounds extended, but a lot of the water was there. And again, all the bridge and everything was there. That was all a brilliant set. Dennis Gastner designed based on a photograph that we had from the First World War. And right here, as he drops down, the camera's taken off the wire and now Gary is walking with it. And we built a tiny little step here so that they had enough room to do this. Yeah, so as the camera comes round with George, as we go up the steps, we're on the Trinity. And then there's a join now and where we see the window and the light from the flare coming over, we're now on a technocrane. Uh, we had to knock out the back wall of the set and put this 50-foot technocrane in and just had enough length on it and the set and some trees behind us which were restricting to be able to just push in and come through this window. The window's built so it parts as the camera comes through. Most of this is in camera. I, I think the edges of the frame are slightly are altered CG wise, but the light from the burning church, as you'll see later, is actually there. It's all augmented a bit, and they say the left and right of frame is 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 helped with a bit of CG. But like now, most of that's in camera. Just about all of it's in camera. The flares are actually real flares that Dom Tui designed. Uh, so that they lasted specific length of time for us. Again, all this was mapped out, the speed of George's run, timing that the light wanted to be on him. We made a little model so we knew how the light would react when, when it went behind these structures. We wanted the shadows to move like you see, so it was all done with a model and LED lights, mapped out precisely to the actual set that was going to be built. Uh, it had to be done before the set was built, otherwise you'd have been changing it around forever with a real building. Um, this is all shot now. I didn't mention the beginning. You come out the window, the match is on a technocrane, and now it's handheld on a stable eye. The guys walk backwards onto an electric vehicle that is now carrying them. They're standing on it here. That was a horrendous piece of operating. Um, but yeah, you're on an electric vehicle and now they're stepping off that electric vehicle that stops in the square. So this is again, just stabilized, held by two grips. And say so these time flares, real flares. Now the blend there is on the edge of that wall. And now we're on a, a conventional steady cam rig, thank goodness. Now we're just being lit, the flares have ended, so now this is just being lit by the, the light of the church, the burning church, which obviously is not a burning church. It's like a, a mixture of Dino lights, 12 lights, nine lights, six lights. In, in all, it's a 60 by 30 base, 50 foot high, five layers of, of lamps, a total of 2,000 um, 1K kind of 1K bulbs, all kind of medium flood bulbs. And again, it's on dimmer, a whole dimmer system. And um, Steve Massey is kind of controlling it. So as the camera comes in and looks at it, it dims down a little bit. So when you first start this shot, this is all one shot. Uh, when it first starts, the, the light's a bit brighter, but now it's dimmed down so that it's not flaring out the camera. Obviously, the light has been replaced by this CG element of the burning church. And there's a little bit of atmosphere added, a little fixed a little bit. The German was real, he was there in that atmosphere. There's a little bit more added and there's some buildings added behind the German character, but that's all in camera. 
as is the, the ground and the fountain and and that background there's a bit of CG again we're st still on steady cam here but now it's back on an electric vehicle and the electric vehicle took off at a pace to be able to run with Schofield there and on this move here George goes into the dugout and we let him leave camera so we could make the blend on the sandbags on the edge of the sandbags because now this set this is set built on location it's all a composite set but we needed to change the rig because now Pete's operating this on a standard steady cam again a shot that was worked out well in advance the only thing that changed is that at one time we had it going the other way which would have meant shooting on the wrong side of the light so once we looked at the the actual set sam really agreed that we wanted to be this side of the light and uh the sandbag kind of window to the left was something that we designed the ceiling is corrugated and i wanted this long slit of light to give you this quite contrasty but um strong side light so and then obviously because it's sandbags i adjusted the sandbags to to give the the light that i wanted on the day so again steady cam all one shot moving into this choreograph to pan with a guy back to george this is probably my f this coming up is my favorite shot i think in the film if i have one I love, I love the way the light is lighting George here. And I, I think at the last minute, I put a few sandbags up so that um, Benedict is against black there. So his head is kind of outlined against the black rather than you're losing him in the, the white of the exterior. Uh, this is what I love. An incredibly hard move on a steady cam to come around so slowly and keep that so strong. And look at the focus pulling too. I mean, we had ND this down quite a lot to uh, get that separation. I probably could have gone further, but uh, you know, you kind of think. And that trade off as Schofield looks up, that focus pull back to Benedict, where, you know, for that line, I think is, I, I actually think that's really quite beautiful. <laughs> 